session. It's uh, Monday, October 28th. Uh, the first, uh, we'll note that uh, all commissioners are present. And the first item uh, on the agenda is a public hearing regarding the 2013 development impact fee projects. And I think the way we'll do this is we'll ask the city attorney to make a presentation and then uh, after uh, he has made that presentation, we'll open it up to uh, public comment. So Mr. Colling, we'll let you take uh, item one here. Thank you, Mr. President. Commissioners, uh, to give you some overview um, of this project, uh, we're dealing with Porter's second edition. Uh, a map of the uh, project is uh, projected behind you. Uh, this project was completed by the developer uh, to construct water and sewer and the road in 29th Street West, Sims Street uh, from 26th to 29th, and 4th Avenue East from 26th to 29th. Uh, the project was completed in two phases. Uh, there is, the first phase was water, sanitary, and sewer, uh, and storm sewer in uh, the whole of the, the project and in uh, the construction of Sim Street. Uh, Sim Street was constructed as part of uh, phase one, and then the remaining street construction of 29th and 4th Avenue East uh, was completed as phase two. Uh, the developer in this uh, project initially owned uh, the 10 lots of Porter Second Subdivision. That's these 10 lots that are in the, the hashed uh, area here. Uh, because of the way this development is situated, um, the developer also um, constructed some improvements that benefited lots that were not owned by the developer. Uh, the remaining lots in this uh, map I, on the north side of 29th Street are not owned by the developer, were not owned by the developer and the lots uh, bordering on the south side of Sim Street uh, were not owned by the developer as well as uh, the two lots on 4th Avenue East. Um, the city uh, has dealt with this sort of situation in the past where a developer puts in improvements uh, that are not uh, solely benefiting the developer, where the developer puts in a road where uh, some other uh, party owns uh, the other side of the road. Um, and typically, uh, our position as a city has been that uh, when a development goes in, um, the owners on either side of the street are responsible for one half of the cost of that uh, infrastructure. Uh, if you take a simplified example, if we were just dealing with one street and say this uh, street cost a million dollars to construct, uh, we would take a position as a city that one half of that cost, uh, $500,000 would be borne by this half of the street and $500,000 would be borne by this half of the street. Uh, this has been true regardless of whether a particular property obtains its access or its water and sewer connections from the improved street. Uh, generally under North Dakota law, property is benefited if it adjoins a public improvement. Although a current property owner may not have current access onto a street, um, it still increases the value of that property by having uh, an improved street adjacent to it. Uh, properties can always uh, change their use in the future, and generally we are uh, forced to look at properties in the abstract rather than uh, how a particular property owner may use a property at, a, at any particular time. Uh, if you can imagine, uh, we've got a very large lot in this subdivision, uh, or in this uh, district. Um, this property owner at the present does not access 29th Street, uh, but we still consider this to be a benefited property. Um, at some point in the future, the property may change its use. They may come in and subdivide this property, divide the lot, and then uh, this portion of the property would then access uh, onto 29th Street. Uh, that is the, the manner in which we would consider this a developed proper, a benefited property under the uh, development impact fee program. Uh, it's true for corner lots as well. Um, when you have a property that, uh, say, is on a corner and uh, is going to have two improved roads on either side uh, of that property, uh, typically the property is only going to have a driveway or have an access on one side, uh, but we would still consider that property benefited by the improved road adjacent to it, even if that particular property owner doesn't have a driveway on that side. Uh, it still increases the value of the property uh, at least in the abstract, uh, if that property is, uh, has a developed road on either side. Um, 
In uh, this particular case, uh, the developer applied for development impact fees in two phases. Uh, for each phase, the, the city committed to the use of development impact fees in the amount not to exceed $600,000. Uh, for each phase. Uh, the development imp impact fee districts uh, were approved in October of 2011 uh, by the City Commission and the boundaries of each district are slightly different. Uh, phase one includes all of the properties that are shaded, uh, whether green or gray in this diagram. Uh, all those properties are in phase one. The phase two properties are just the gray. Phase two properties are just the gray. The reason for the, the difference uh, is basically the construction of Sim Street. Uh, in phase one, uh, these properties were adjacent to Sim Street, so they were included within that district. Um, phase two was only the construction of 29th Street and 4th. Um, 29th Street and 4th Avenue do not touch these properties, so those properties were not included uh, in that phase. Now, um, the developer uh, funded the construction of both phase one and phase two. Uh, the total construction costs were 2.7 million, uh, each phase being approximately 1.35 million. And pursuant to the development impact fee program, the city is entitled to impose fees in the amount of $600,000 for each phase upon the properties within each uh, respective district. Um, accordingly, for each of uh, these phases or each of these districts, the developer is already born about $750,000 in costs, uh, the developer owning these lots. So uh, under the rules of the program, uh, we would attribute that $750,000 in costs to these lots, uh, as those lots already having contributed uh, to the development of the project. Uh, the city code de uh, dealing with development impact fees provides that if a developer has made payments for the improvement for which an impact fee is assessed to property not owned by the developer, uh, the developer may, at the discretion of the Special Assessment Commission, receive a credit for the amount of those payments. Uh, at the Special Assessment Commission meeting, uh, the Commission determined uh, that all of these properties within each district were benefited properties, since they were adjacent to the developments uh, that were constructed uh, by the developer. And uh, the Special Assessment Commission also determined that uh, since the developer had constructed the improvements that benefited other properties that were not owned by the developer, that the developer should receive credit for the amount of those payments. Uh, in short, uh, the Special Assessment Commission uh, found that the developer had already paid its portion or share of the total cost of the development. Uh, for that reason, the lots that were owned by the developer at the outset of the project uh, was determined that those lots uh, should not bear the cost of the special assessment uh, or the development impact fee that would be imposed. Um, again, those lots had already been determined to have paid their fair share of the costs or their proportionate share of the costs, and therefore the uh, properties that were benefited by the improvements but that were not owned by the developer um, would bear the cost of uh, the special assessment or the development impact fee that would be imposed upon those properties. Um, it is uh, the rec recommendation of city staff and of the Special Assessment Commission that the development impact fees for these districts uh, would then be imposed upon those lots that uh, were not owned by the developer uh, when the development impact fee district was created. Uh, there is one change that has been made to the assessment list uh, from the um, lists that were provided to you last week. Um, there are three lots within uh, these districts that are owned by the city. Uh, this lot, there's a small lot, uh, 10,000 square foot lot there, and a small lot uh, there that is owned by the city. Um, initially, uh, the assessment list that you were shown last week uh, showed those lots as being exempt from the special assessment or exempt from the development impact fee. Um, that was incorrect. Uh, properties that are owned by political subdivisions, such as the city, are not exempt from development impact fees or from special assessments. So in the list that you provided for uh, this week's meeting, for tonight's meeting, uh, those city lots are included within uh, the assessment. Uh, that has the result of uh, lowering, in some degree, the special assessments or the development impact fees that are imposed upon the remaining lots in the district. Uh, 
as you'll note in your materials, uh, we have calculated the development impact fees on a per square foot basis. Uh, that is consistent with the manner in which uh, the city has done, um, to my knowledge, every uh, other development impact fee district that the city has, has created. Uh, they've all been done by uh, square footage of the, of the lots. Uh, there are two other ways that development impact fees or special assessments can be imposed upon properties. It can be done by lineal foot uh, so that properties pay not according to their square footage but according to their uh, basically their street frontage um, of how, how much street frontage they have on the, de the property or the, on the development. Um, they can also be assessed a per lot charge uh, so that each property uh, within the district would receive an equal charge. Um, after running those numbers, neither one of those uh, methods appear to be an appropriate way to uh, assess development impact fees in this case. Uh, the square footage of these lots are uh, dramatically different. Uh, we have lots of uh, million square feet and we have lots of 10,000 square feet. Um, so since all those, those lots are benefited, um, it didn't seem to, to be an appropriate method to do a per lot uh, allocation of, uh, of the development impact fee. Um, and otherwise, uh, I, under either of those uh, other methods, linear foot or per lot basis, uh, except for one property, uh, one lot, the assessments on the remainder of the district all went up fairly substantially. Uh, so uh, city staff uh, feel uh, comfortable with the recommendation of uh, assessing these development impact fees on a per square foot basis uh, and not per lot or uh, as uh, per linear feet. Um, there are several spreadsheets that are provided to you in your packet uh, tonight. Uh, there is uh, the, the first spreadsheet shows uh, the assessment amounts with the developer's lots included in the assessment. Um, this is not the recommendation that city staff or the Special Assessment Commission would have for you. Uh, under our judgment, um, it is appropriate to credit the developer for uh, its costs in uh, developing those, uh, those streets in the sewer and water. So the recommendation uh, for phase one that city staff and the Special Assessment Commission will have for you uh, is the second spreadsheet that you provided. Uh, it has the city lots included within the special assessment <coughs> and the uh, lots, the 10 lots within Porter's second subdivision removed from the assessment. Um, the, uh, the particular spreadsheet that we're looking at, um, the first property on it is, is Braun Property uh, LLC and the assessment amount uh, given in there is $51,830. Uh, the city lot, uh, first city lot is 2,700. The Water Tower Business Park is 40,492. Uh, the next city of Dickinson lot is 31,156. 31, uh, the small city lot is again 2,700. And then the developer lots in the middle are removed from the assessment. Uh, the remaining assessments uh, for uh, Western LCM has two lots that are both assessed at about $39,000. Um, and then the Baker Hughes uh, Corporation oil field operations has three lots uh, that are assessed at $278,000, $57,000, and $57,000 in rough amounts. Mr. President, that's uh, all the information that I have as an introduction. I'd be happy to take any questions you may have. Thank you, Mr. Coley. Now, before we open it up to public comments, are there any questions by uh, city commissioners? Well, you can uh, ask questions at any time. Um, at this time, we will open it up to public comment. Anyone that wishes to comment on this may do so. Just come to the podium, state your name, and we'll hear your comment. Is there anybody that wishes to comment? Good evening, commissioners. I'm Kevin Brown with Brown Properties. Um, I would represent the lot with all the green grass on the lower left-hand side. Um, again, as I spoke last week, I feel we shouldn't be part of this district, this assessment district, just because 
we've been there for since 2006. All our utilities, water, sewer, access all come off 26th Street. Um, everything else in that whole development is new. Uh, we've, we've had our services for a long time. Um, over the past week, I've inquired from a, a company that does special assessments across the country. Um, they have provided me with some information that um, North Dakota does have statutes which govern how we should be assessed specials. Um, it says that allocation of cost should not exceed the benefits received by the land. We're not getting any water, we're not getting any sewer, and we're not getting any access to the new development, yet we're being assessed special assessments. That would be my argument that we are an exception to the rule in the whole special assessment district, and I would ask that we be excluded. Okay, thank you, Mr. Brown. Yep. Anyone else wish to comment? Afternoon, Commissioners. Uh, Quentin Kitson. Um, I'm the developer, one of the partners that developed Porter Second. Uh, just, I'm available for questions or any anything that you need to ask. We did invite Mr. Sorn to attend this meeting just for. Um, I know he was involved in the beginning of it, and um, therefore, if you had any questions of him, he would be available also. I believe. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kitson. Is there anybody else that wishes to comment? Good evening. My name is Dan Clark. I'm the owner of Water Tower Business Park, which would be the, uh, the lower green on the right-hand side where the uh, water tower is. And uh, I'm somewhat at a disadvantage because the, uh, I just, uh, the, the way I heard about this meeting and the uh, problem was uh, by reading the Dickinson Press a week ago at, because of your last meeting I didn't get my notice uh, either in September or October so I was uh, shooting from the dark apparently got mailed to the wrong address but the question I would have coming in after the fact is uh, obviously part of my lot is already developed off of 26th Street fully developed there so am I being assessed based upon my entire lot or just the portion that would run and be affected off of Sims. Uh, that would be one question because I don't, I'm not privy to what your information is as to how many square feet that I'm being assessed on. Uh, and then the second thing is, is uh, both Mr. Brown and myself were kind of drug into this. Uh, he's certainly getting no benefit from it that I can see, at least at this juncture. And I'm getting some benefit, but it would be fairly minimal because I could have developed, I had water, sewer, everything off of 26th Street and certainly could have developed my land accordingly. Uh, the, the fact that there's an access on Sims is great, and I do think I have benefited, but I'm not sure it's uh, proportionate to what the other benefits are further to the north. So here again, because it is a discretion, according to Mr. Coling, that I would ask that discretion be used uh, for Mr. Brown and myself, that uh, if, if we're not relieved completely, that it would be some other type of uh, a rationale as to how much we would be assessed since we were kind of drug into this thing after uh, through the back door. So that would be my comment. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Clark. Is there uh, anybody else that would like to comment? Uh, I will ask uh, Mr. Colling to respond to Mr. Clark's questions, but before we do that, is there anybody else that wishes to comment? Okay, um, Mr. Colain, uh, do you kind of remember Mr. Clark's question or questions there? I remember correctly his question as to uh, the correct notification um, and how uh, the property owner was notified of uh, the Special Assessment Commission meeting uh, or as well as uh, the City Commission meeting last week. Uh, the notices are sent out uh, pursuant to the addresses that are given uh, on the assessor's office from the assessor's office. So the property tax statements um, that are mailed out, uh, that's the addresses that uh, we would have used or KLJ would have used when they completed this process for us uh, as far as notifying property owners. Um, 
believe uh, we have the records and those addresses uh, or the, the mailings did go out to the addresses on the assessor's website um, and we have uh, documentation of that um, but I, I guess I would uh, see if Mr. Kubis would like to, to speak to that as well. Yeah, I, I talked with Mr. Clark here last week and uh, the address um, that was noted on the assessor's website is the address, the physical address of the property that he owns, um, not the address of his corporation. So I got that mailing out to him last week um, after we had visited. And his, his second question on the, on the square footage that's being assessed um, is, is for the, the entire property. It's 150,000 square feet. Did you have another question? I can't recall. Well, uh, sir, not necessarily another question, but another point that uh, obviously not all of my 150,000 square feet would be positively affected by SIMS whatsoever because it's already developed uh, off of 26th Street. So the rationale to have all 150,000 square feet of mine or Mr. Braun's approximately 200,000 square feet doesn't seem to make much sense to me that those would be uh, fully impacted by SIMS since uh, m most of my property was already developed and all of Mr. Brown's property was all already developed. I, uh, I think the point that Mr. Colling was trying to make subtly is that an alternative is to do this on the basis of, of lineal feet. Uh, but because of the large property that is north of 29th Street, if we do it on lineal feet, it'll actually increase the amount of the assessment to your property. If I understood Mr. Colling correctly. And Again, Mr. Colin, I, I think you said it in your introductory remarks, but it might bear repeating again um, regarding benefited properties. You know, and, and um, you know, I hear Mr. Brown and, and Mr. Clark that their properties already had water and sewer from a different different direction and therefore in their minds they're not benefited but that isn't necessarily uh, how the law defines benefited property is that correct uh, yes mr president uh, commissioners the the way the city has looked at, at benefited properties is if you have a street that is adjacent to your property uh, you are benefited by that improvement uh, despite the fact that there may not be uh, a driveway access onto that property, uh, you are still benefited by having a street that is paved, that is improved, adjacent to your property. Uh, generally, under principles of, of real estate appraisal, uh, property that has uh, improvements located next to it uh, is a more valuable property than a property that does not. Um, that is, is, in general, the way that, that the city would look at uh, this situation. Uh, corner lots always provide uh, a, a sort of problem when you you uh, determine special assessments in that manner uh, because most properties only have access onto one side uh, or one one side of the street one corner um, they don't access onto both sides uh, but still a property is benefited uh, by having water and sewer access there by having uh, the ability uh, at some point in the future if the use of the property should change uh, to have the ability to access that. Um, it's a more valuable property if it has access, or if it has improvements rather on both sides. Uh, and that is the, the manner in which the city would look at it. Thank you, Mr. Colling. Um, we'll continue with the discussion, uh, whether from the public here or um, commissioners. So anybody else care to speak? President, Mr. Jackson, um, you know I think the question of benefit with streets is clear cut. I, um, Mr. Colling talked about 
value of real estate, but there are some very practical reasons that a street benefits a property, whether it's the side street or the front street or whatever, um, benefits having to do with control of drainage, um, dust, um, mud, you know, you can, I don't think it's hard to see practical benefits for a street being constructed. You get to water and sewer, it's a little more difficult. With, with water, um, I think you can talk about fire protection because it does supply more water and you can take that even to the domestic supply to a piece of property. Um, it does provide additional uh, routes for that water to travel to the lot. In other words, if you'd have a, um, a water break or some other impediment to water supply, now you've got a second route for water to supply that lot. The sewer to me is, is perhaps the most difficult. I don't know for sure. And I don't know where the sewer stopped on Sims. Um, you know, that, that sewer may not benefit those lots much. Although, when I look at the, I believe the topography on both lots, um, and I think especially the lot on the east side, does fall off to the north. So while you may get access to sewer off of 26th, you do get increased access, I believe, because of the sewer in Sims. And you know, maybe there were, maybe there are no plans to use that increased access. I'm not addressing that, but it, it may, in a very real way, increase the, the options for a property owner. So I think there are benefits there. We could talk for a long time about whether they are proportionate benefits, and we'd each have a little different opinion about that. But there's no question in my mind that there are, there are benefits, especially on the street side of things. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. Anybody else? I would just like to have Mr. Soren, who was the city engineer at the time, if he could just answer a couple questions for me. This was approved. The original assessments were approved at an actual assessment commission meeting, correct? In 2011? No, in, in 2011, the district was created and uh, notices were sent out to the property owners um, for what the potential assessment could be based on, on the project. We didn't take it to an assessment commission at that point. Only after the project was done was it taken to the special assessment commission. And when was that? Mm. That was, uh, Mr. President, Commission Ducard, that would have been October 2nd, I believe, of this year. Oh, this year. Okay. Uh, typically, the way we have operated these districts if we, is that we've only gone to the Special Assessment Commission for the final determination of amounts once the actual project costs are known and the project has been completed. The other question, was it at, at an advantage for the city for the developer to develop this whole district because the owners only owned half of it so what benefit was it to them I mean they could pay for theirs up front so why why did they develop the other half well I guess to answer that that question um, you know to build half a street makes things very difficult um, and through our our process whenever we'd have a developer come in just for access for emergency vehicles and, and access to the lots, you wanted to get those streets completed, um, which required water sewer um, to get completed as well as the, the streets. And we used the impact fee program to allow a developer only owned half of the lot or half of the, the project um, to, to accomplish that and then go back and get those specials paid by the, uh, the other properties that were improved as well so that's what they were told that you do it all and then you pay your half yes. okay thank you any other comments questions anybody else 
Okay, we'll declare the public hearing closed. Um, Mr. Colling, the resolution before us is which number now? Uh, Mr. President, I believe this would be resolution 32-2013. Okay, and uh, as I read the resolution, it I think it refers to the assessment list, and you provided us two assessment lists. That's correct, Mr. President. You, uh, as a commission, would need to choose between those assessment lists uh, as to which one you would choose to confirm. Well, if we're, if we're voting on the resolution, how it, explain the mechanics to us so uh, we not only act on the resolution but we act on the list that we think we should be acting on. Mr. President, in this situation, uh, I believe you would want to take uh, two votes on each district. Um, the first vote being a uh, decision on which assessment list you choose to confirm. Um, if you choose uh, to follow staff's recommendation, uh, would be the assessment list uh, that does not include the Porter Second subdivision uh, lots within the, the assessment. Um, and once you have confirmed in a, uh, or have uh, decided which assessment list you will use, uh, then you would have a separate motion uh, to adopt the resolution confirming uh, the impact fee district. Can I call uh, one of these Exhibit A and one Exhibit B? Does that work? You may. You may. Okay, we will name Exhibit A as the uh, uh, one that excludes the uh, Porter subdivision, and so that's one that starts with uh, the Brown property at 51,830, and we'll call Exhibit B. Um, Exhibit B will be the one that uh, has, uh, starts with the Brown property at $33,129. So these are designated Exhibit A and Exhibit B. So we would need a motion. Um, either accepting Exhibit A or Exhibit B. And as you heard Mr. Colling, it's his and other city staff's recommendation that Exhibit A be the one accepted. Did I have that correct, Mr. Colling? I'll move that we accept Exhibit A. Is there a second? Second. We have the motion and the second. Any discussion by commissioners? I'm still interested in talking more. I, I find myself wondering about the sewer on those two lots that front 26th. I don't know if Mr. Kubis or maybe Mr. Soren can help me with that. Um, I, I guess I'm still wondering about the benefit of sewer. I guess I would concur and I have the original assessment that was sent out when the project was first um, put on the table in 2011 and on that one it was done by linear foot and in phase one which the Braun and the Clark property are part of um, the water and sewer was 31,700 for the Braun the street, which we can all agree was a direct benefit, or, or at least that's where we're leaning, was 35,800 for the street. Um, I have those figures. Here's how it broke out before based on 400.
Can anybody tell me? Does that sewer extend through those two lots? The street through those two lots? Is the question, does the sewer extend all the way through Sim Street? Does the sewer extend, let's say, north of the north boundary of those two lots? That I don't know. I'd have to look on a city map. Mr. Jackson, you're asking the sewer on Sim Street? Yes. If it extends. Yeah, sorry to get this de detailed. No, that's that's but, fine. Um, you know, I have a hunch that that sewer was put in to serve the four lots, or perhaps only the two lots, that are north of the Brown property and uh, the uh, Water Tower Business Park property. Mr. Kitson or Mr. Soren, do you know the answer to that? Oh, that got changed. Yeah. I can't remember the exact location on the sewer. I know the water did tie in at, at uh, um, 26th and went to 29th all the way through. I believe sewer came up into those lots, but I don't believe it came all the way to 26th. And at the time, if I remember correctly, I don't believe we were anticipating an assessment of sewer to the Braun property because they were already tied into sewer on 26th. But I think we were <coughs> uh, included water on, on both properties, particularly just for the added connection, fire protection, things you get with, with that but I'd have to go back and look at those plans for sure to tell you how far it came south. So what are you thinking, Mr. Jackson? Well, I guess I'm really wondering if, if one or both of those properties should be assessed for the sewer. I know that causes us a, some arithmetic problem, but um, um, I think for our purposes tonight, we don't have to be to the exact dollar. I think we could come up with an allowance for the cost of that sewer and, and adjust it if we think that's, that an adjustment is appropriate. Um, would, if, if, if it were appropriate, it would raise the assessment on the remaining property? Yes, it would. Yes, it would. So I, I think you, my own opinion would be before we vote to approve anything, you want to have the math correct. And I think by that I mean the math should comply with the way we view the assessment should be made. In order to do that, we'd have to know the cost of the sewer alone and then spread it back amongst the other lots, excluding one or both of those lots. Because this was a developer project, I'm not sure we have the ability to have that exact number. It wasn't a city project. Um, Do we know those costs, Mr. Colling or Mr. Kubas? Did we have that kind of detail? The the water and sewer costs were combined in one contract, but we could go back and I don't know if it would be 100% accurate, but you could go back and, and break out those costs of what the, the cost of the water main and the sewer main were. Can we get that done in time to meet the county's deadline? Yes, we could. If, if we had uh, an action today, um, in speaking with staff, we need to uh, certify those numbers to the county uh, probably by Wednesday, this Wednesday. So. And would it be sufficient to pass these resolutions tonight without the exact number to give staff the 
the uh, direction to back the sewer off and do that arithmetic adjustment? Uh, assuming uh, that Mr. Kubitz would have the, the ability to, to go back through those contracts within the next uh, day, um, we could craft a motion that would allow for that. See, I don't have a problem with the streets at all on those two lots. And I, and I really can get myself comfortable with the water. But I am struggling with the sewer. Maintaining that there is a benefit. I'd now, be okay with that. I mean, if we wanted to uh, pass it with the uh, <coughs> recommendations, I'd have no problem with that. I, Mr. Uh, Mr. Oldman, if we went that direction. Are you okay? Because if there seems to be a consensus, what we'll do is we will hold off on this for a few minutes and give Mr. Colling time to help us with the appropriate motion. And we'll move to the second item on the uh, on the agenda. If you're still having problems with this, then we'll continue to discuss it. And, but if you think that's the way you're willing to go, then we'll let Mr. Colling work on that motion. Let's move on to the second one and we'll come back to the first okay, one. Okay, so I suppose Mr. Cole, oh no, uh, I think um, Mr. Gratton will be introducing this item, but before I ask him to do that, and then Mr. Colleen, uh, you're going to work up a motion that you think would suffice? Okay. All right. I want to do phase two. Um, Well, let me, Mr. Colley, let me interrupt you. Uh, can we do phase two of this? Um, it's, we don't have a similar issue on phase two, do we? Uh, Mr. President, you don't. Uh, the lots in green on the map behind you are removed from uh, phase two, so it would only be the lots that are outlined in gray or shaded in gray. Uh, you don't have the issue, I believe, of uh, sewer access with, with respect to those lots in gray, uh, so your decision would uh, only be whether or not to exclude uh, the lots, the developer lots within Porter's second edition. Okay, so um, Mr. Jackson, uh, would you withdraw I your would. motion on Exhibit A? I would. And who made that second? I did. I'd would you withdraw it? Okay, so we will uh, agree to come back to this uh, in a few minutes, we'll go to number two uh, on the, the second item on agenda one. That's the Porter's second subdivision phase two. Oh. Um, Mr. Colling has already made the introduction there. Uh, we'll ask if there's anyone from the public that would like to comment on this issue. If you would, come to the podium, state your name, we'll hear your comments. Anybody from the public on this one? No one from the public that wishes to comment, so we'll declare that portion of the public hearing closed. I think we can do with this one um, uh, what we tried to do with the first one. We'll, we'll call it uh, Exhibit A will be the one that begins with the Kilwain 5th edition, City of Dickinson lot, where the assessment is $37,019. Exhibit B uh, would have that same property assessed at $23,488. Again, it is Mr. Colling's recommendation that uh, we adopt Exhibit A uh, rather than Exhibit B. So with that, I'll Chair to entertain a motion. Mr. President, move to approve Exhibit A. Is there a second? Second. We have the motion and the second. Is there any discussion? 
Hearing none, we'll vote on that motion. Mr. Steiner? Aye. Mrs. Stuttgart? Aye. Mr. Jackson? Aye. Mr. Altman? Aye. Chair votes aye. The motion carries. And then, Mr. Colling, I'm assuming this is Resolution 33? Yes, Mr. President, that's okay. correct. So, Resolution 33-2013 uh, is a Phase 2 resolution. Uh, would there be a motion regarding Resolution 33? I'll move we adopt 33-2013. Is there a second? Second. second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, we'll vote. Mr. Jackson? Aye. Mr. Steiner? Aye. Mrs. Stuttgart? Aye. Mr. Altman? Aye. Chair votes aye. Motion carried. Um, Mr. Colling, by any chance, do you have that motion crafted? I believe I do, Mr. President. Um, and I will uh, give the exact language of this to uh, Ms. Benstock as she completes the minutes. But I believe your motion would be uh, to approve the spreadsheet identified as Exhibit A, provided that the costs of the sewer construction to Lot 2, Block 1, Kilwine 5th Edition, and Lot 2, Block 2, Kilwine 5th Edition be removed from the assessments for those respective lots and reapportioned to the remaining lots within the Development Impact B District, excluding, lot, um, excluding the lots within Porter's second subdivision. Okay, you've heard Mr. Colling's motion uh, or his wording of a motion. Is there a commissioner that would care to move that motion? I'll make that motion. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. Any discussion? Okay, just for clarification, we're, we're talking about withdrawing. We're getting a number for the cost of the sewer. Miss, maybe Mr. Colling can show us on the map here. It, yes, if, if I may, uh, we would get the cost of sewer construction for this lot and for this lot and remove those costs from the uh, assessment list that is provided to you on Exhibit A. And whatever those costs are would then be reapportioned to the remaining lots within the district, uh, excluding the developer lots. The, in sum, the, the costs of the sewer construction will be apportioned uh, to the city lot, which is this one. Um, this is a city lot here, and then these lots on the north side of 29th Street. Are there other comments or questions? Well, I guess I'll just make a blanket statement and then we, we can move on from there. You know, um, probably our hardest task is, you know, allocating what's going to be fair and equitable to all the properties involved, you know, weighing the, the benefits and, um, you know, probably the toughest choice is that we're spending someone else's money. But then as a commission and as city staff, we kind of are challenged with that every day. And, and it's hard to make sure that you're you're doing that in a way that feels good for for everyone involved and and there's no denying that you know having streets that aren't finished and having subdivisions that aren't connected doesn't benefit anyone um, at that same time you hate to see anyone bear you know the entire cost for that as well and so when we look at you know the first way that this was drawn out you know, um, the Braun property was going to shoulder almost $100,000 of, of the cost. And um, the Clark property was going to shoulder $75,000 of the cost. And, you know, at that time, the city lots were excluded, which, you know, we can see is not how it should be. Um, our city properties are definitely going to receive the benefit from this as well, so they should be involved. And so on the resolution that, that we're looking at in option A, you know, the, the Braun property and the Water Tower Business Park have each been dropped by, you know, half from, from where they currently are. And I would agree with Mr. Jackson, you know, backing the sewer portion out of that too, you know, 
None of these properties have said that they really didn't feel like they wouldn't have some cost participation, but at the end of this process, you want to step away from it thinking it was as fair as could be. And so, um, I, you know, I still have reservations. I've had reservations about the program from the beginning. Um, I'm just seeing this is probably as close as we're going to get to everybody agreeing. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Oldman. Does anybody else wish to comment? Okay, if not, uh, we'll go ahead and vote. Uh, Mr. Jackson? Aye. Mr. Steiner? Aye. Mr. Oldman? Aye. Mrs. Stuckart? Aye. Chair votes aye. The motion carries. Okay. And, um, I know you'll get these done by Wednesday in time to make the deadline for the county, but uh, perhaps either Mr. Colleen or Mr. Kubas at next Monday night's meeting, you can just give us an update so we know how this all worked out. Okay? Yeah. All right, Mr. Curtan, um, this next item is also a public. Is we still have the resolution, don't we? Is that what we just did? Yeah, we just did the resolution. We just did A and B, didn't we? Uh, I, I, we did I thought we did them both, but maybe I didn't. Did I do them both? Okay. Sorry. Well, that's all right. Bye. Uh, okay, now we're on the public hearing regarding rezoning petitions, so uh, I'll let you make the introduction, then we'll open the public hearing, okay? Okay, Mr. President, uh, Commissioners, uh, at the last meeting, the uh, rezone, uh, aforementioned rezone of uh, lots one and two of block 12 of, um, of um, uh, just escape me, Prairie Hills 4th edition uh, came in front of us. The applicant came up to the podium and uh, had some clarification with uh, one of the conditions, <coughs> the conditions or um, a policy that we have that they had to pave half the street of uh, 16th Avenue West. Uh, you directed staff to contact them by a conference call last week, uh, both uh, Craig Kubis and myself. We called them last week, he explained our policy. Uh, after, a, after a lengthy conversation, he came around and uh, understood it, and he is no longer opposed to that. Uh, we did, uh, I did mention to him that we would attach that as part of the approval. You have the amended ordinance in front of you in which condition two talks about uh, paving of one half the roadway of 16th Avenue West. The applicants uh, uh, no longer opposed to that, and uh, city staff would recommend approval. Mr. President. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Don. At this time, we'll declare the public hearing open. Anyone that wishes to comment regarding this item may do so. Just come to the podium, state your name. We'll hear your comments. There's be no one that wishes to comment. We'll declare the public hearing closed. This is the second. And final reading of Ordinance 1527, is there a motion regarding this item? I'll make a motion to approve second reading of Resolution 1527. Do we have a second? Second. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, we'll vote. Mrs. Stuckart. Aye. Mr. Jackson. Aye. Mr. Altman. Aye. Mr. Steiner. Aye. Chair votes aye. The motion carries. There are no other items on the agenda. <laughs> So Mr. Chair President, this Mr. President, are you there? I apologize. Uh, in, in reviewing the notes on the minutes, we do need a motion to approve Resolution 32-2013. Uh, that motion was made but then withdrawn as you moved on to the next item. So we would need to approve that resolution. Oh, okay. 32-2013. Second. We have the motion, the second. Any discussion? Hearing none, uh, we'll vote. Mr. Jackson, Aye. Mrs. Stuttgart, Aye. Mr. Steiner, Aye. Mr. Altman. Aye. Chair votes aye. Motion carries. Anything else, Mr. Colling? Okay. Then uh, we'll go ahead and ask for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor of adjourning, say aye. Aye. Opposed, say nay. The motion carries. We're adjourned.